Round one, we've got the choice. We'll play first. And we've got all of our colors. We have early stuff. Very good hand. We even have a potentially turn four Ivory Tusk Fortress, which is certainly a big threat to deal with. So this is actually probably one of the better hands I could ask for out of this deck since we literally have all three colors ramp, a one drop, a, a board wipe that does nothing against us. Truly a good hand. So now we've got turn four Ivory Tusk Fortress, which is pretty, pretty bonkers. We even get to board wipe with Death Frenzy at some point for some nice value as well. So, oh geez, I forgot how good the students are with Death Frenzy too. Yeah, I think Death Frenzy was definitely the right uh, main deck choice. So now we go Banner Pass. Guess I could have just swung with Ancestor, huh? It's probably pretty likely he blocked, but then again, we're in green now, so he could think we have Dragon Scale Boon or Awaken the Bear. Next turn, we can go land, sack banner, play student, which is kind of good. Because I think at five, we can play everything in our deck, I believe. No, I guess right of the serpent we can't play. But All right, let's go ahead and eat that valley dasher. Happily gobble him up with our elephant, meat-eating elephant. Seems like a decent opportunity to Death Frenzy, but I'm not convinced just yet. I think what I'm going to do is swing with Team. See how he blocks. Because my hope is that he blocks Student Ancestor, and then I'll definitely Death Frenzy. That seems like a big detrimental setback to him. It also, yeah, it makes much more sense for him to block with student because he cares a lot less about student than he does about battle priest. So this is actually just going to be a blowout attack for us, I think. It's not necessarily the most crazy thing ever, but it's a very nice two for one. Very nice two for one. So uh, I guess we can actually play palace and then play death frenzy. Let's do that. I see. Gain some life, and then we pass turn. Well... Right of the Serpent's a thing, but I'm not really feeling it here. I think we just want to swing Fortress, Outlast, Student, Sack Banner. 
Can I do all of that? That seems like way too much stuff. I wouldn't be able to. Let's, let's sack Banner first. And then I'll decide from there. Because if I get the land, then... Or did I already... I think I already played the land. I believe I already played the land, because I had one left over, yeah. So now I can... Uh, I guess I can outlast Hateblade, too. That's, that's not bad. Maybe we do that. I just like the idea of outlasting this turn. I'd rather have two power swinging in. That way I can deal with future morph. I guess it can force away, but that's all right. Get my fortress back later. Do I play around? I'm not going to play around in hostilities. Doesn't seem worth it. All right, bash in for three, play double student and pass. And then we can even right of the serpent, his next guy to bash in more if we want, but we'll see if we even have to. It's more likely we just drop the fortress and go to town. Whirlwind Adept is definitely a card. All right, so we just swing with Ancestor Hateblade. Drop the Fortress and pass. So he does have end hostilities. All right, still seems fine to me. Ooh, it's a nice one to get. Let's uh, bash in here. Played around the prowess, which we didn't have, so I'm glad he did that. And we'll follow up with a morphed Abzan guide because why do I want to do morphed? I can leave up the death touch, but I guess we just hard cast. I want to be able to cast right of the serpent next turn, so it does actually make sense. Gives him free information, but I don't really mind. Oh, I just having right of the serpent next turn seems way more important than the surprise factor of a uh, Abzan guide.
All right. Seems like something I can fairly easily pay for. So possibly a monastery flock, but I'm not sure if I mind that. I see the issue, though. The hate blade can't swing in and I, if I untap the fortress, but I don't think that's a big deal. Let's just, uh, let's just untap the fortress and swing for nine. Probably wants to trade the adept for the guide. All right, it's pretty good for us overall. Let's just go ahead and Got a feeling this is the weaponsmith, so it's just right of the serpent him now. Get my prowess going. I mean, it's certainly not a ponyback brigade, so I imagine it's just a weaponsmith. All right. He doesn't, well, let's, it was a canyon lurker, so that's much less exciting. Uh... He didn't even lose there, did he? I would have swung with these three. He would have blocked. He would have taken three, gone to three. I mean, I guess he just didn't have a draw out of it, so whatever. Uh, so he's aggressive, which makes the Death Frenzy much better. Kind of want to find a way to make Dread Maul work in here, to be honest. I almost want to take out Smite. The one four-power guy we saw was Hexproof. Did we see any others? We saw a Morph guy that did have five power, but it's only two toughness, so that's less exciting. I feel pretty comfortable cutting Smite for Dreadmaw. I'd rather have the life gain for the late game because I feel like we're better in the late game, but I don't know. I don't think I need to bring in Secret. I don't like it as much against aggressive decks like this. Uh, but Attendance is going to be tough to get online, admittedly. I'm trying to think how many cards I had in my yard that game. I probably only had like two, maybe. Uh, but this looks good. This looks fine. Let's try this. Hey, great hand. Certainly a great hand. Busy early. Busy mid-game. And busy late. Trade a hate blade for a student. I don't have any problems with that. He doesn't want to trade his student, though. That I find interesting. Suspension field's nice. Not worth it on a student. Much rather do it on a bigger threat later. We get to go Kirin into Armament Core, double pumping our Kirin. I could also play around Smite the Monstrous by playing Armament Core and just pumping the Kirin once, which is an actual okay option.
All right, let's get the Kirin down. If he swings team, then he logically has Trumpet Blast. Oh, Ascendancy. It's a good one. I do have a race out of sideboard, so that's a good reason to bring it in. Uh, I'm not going to play around Smite the Monster, so we're just going to drop the Armament Core. And we're going to pump our Kirin twice. Four or five Flying Vigilance. Pretty nice. Got the Savage Punch for full value right now, which is nice as well. All right. I think we're going to savagely punch that. He's also missing his lands, which, as you might expect, is pretty tremendously beneficial. Let's just Savage Punch the crap out of this Morph guy and follow up with a student. It was a Mystic of the Hidden Way. Get in for 10. All right. Uh, frustratingly, I'm sure, because he was missing his land drops, but, uh, we had, we had just excellent hands, turn progressions both games, so, uh, just, just awesome all around, uh, how that worked out for us. I'm glad Armament Core got to shine there. Works just, that was, I think, the first time I've gotten to see it with the Kirin, so that was just excellent. 4-5 Flying Vigilance is very, just an amazing body in this format, I think. Um, yeah, so I'll see you round two.